Well, it's somewhat regrettable that Mr. Trumpino didn't come because I had a few questions regarding his request. As do I. Um, so I guess my, um, Ron, do you have a view? Um, uh, no, I agree that there's questions that need to be answered. Okay. So, I think we'll, I think we'll have to continue it. I, I, I just had a request and if he would be, I, I needed to talk to him. What? Um, okay. We'll bring him in next one. Okay. All right. Move to continue to October 3rd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So our next order of business is a major land development um, pre-application meeting of photovoltaic solar energy, energy system, AP4, lot 25, 310 Main Street, Maxton Hill, LLC. We have Anthony Del Cario as our applicant. Um, Mr. Nakarado. Yes. Before you begin, may I just check with um, our assistant planner? Um, so Al is on his way. Al um, Diario, our uh, our chairman. Thank you, sir. <laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. Our chairman uh, was recused from the earlier two, and so he'll be joining us. Um, but shall we just begin? Oh. What do you think? Okay.
their statement. I mean, I could say, okay, I'm going to back up stale for, for 20 years. It doesn't mean as much as the Washington Trust is dead. It's good. So two quick things. I mean, we, we discussed this at the last meeting, and you know, I'm a hardworking business guy like you. And I looked you right in the face and I asked you where you are right this. Uh, you said you were, and, and this is what I do for a living. I knew you were happy, and I asked you again. Right. And you said yes. Right. So you know, I don't blame you, but. Well, we gave you the opportunity, and you, and you agreed, you know, and so you're going to own this property, correct? Right. And you're the one that's going to own the solar system, right? What happens if you decide to sell and go away? How does that letter of credit still follow the project? Um, you could, uh... You, you know, that's why I, what, what you said, I completely agree with. Right. You know, you've done anything, you know, you're, you're, you're one of us. But you could go, <laughs> but through both of here in 20 years. Well, so we all hope we are, but you know, we could decide to move to Tahiti, right? You know, and sell out. <laughs> so that's that's my real concern. I'm a little, I'm a little annoyed because we discussed this, you know, but I get. It. Yeah. Well, and we did discuss what was after the meeting outside. And well, that didn't go. Well. That didn't go well outside. So, Mr. Chuck, can you, um, I, I have similar concerns to Tom. It, it really is, I understand about the precedent being set, but even in that other case, I was a little squidgy on saying it's okay, because then, then what's to stop everyone saying, hey, I'm cool, I'm upstanding, can I have a letter of credit too? You know, and so that's, that's my concern. And I understand that you were different from a lot of the applicants that come before us and the fact that you are going to own the land, own the system, and all of that. And so that's sort of why we were agreed in the last case. Um, so we would have to have some way to say that it had changed. Again, it's, it's $10,000, it's not $100,000, it's not... Right. Right. And my portable taxes are more right. than double that. Right. So, it's, uh, I think it's about $10,000. Yeah, right. Right. So, that's my only concern. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Figure out a way to, in case you decide not to own it anymore for whatever reason, that whoever takes over the new ownership takes over the, the burden the of, the, uh, of decommissioning. Um, I'm not sure the legal terms, but in the event that it's sold and that money will go to the town office. Is that something we can leave in? We can ask Kevin. Uh, Kevin's our solicitor. Do you have a view? Of well, yes, I, I have a number of views. Uh, first of all, what was done in other cases does not set a binding precedent. The, the ordinance is very clear that uh, it's up to the planning board. Uh, how they want to handle that. I think the intention uh, of, of any bonding required, particularly for the decommissioning situation and these solar projects, is to make sure that the town doesn't get stuck with the expense of uh, dismantling the site, uh, restoring the site. Uh, and. While life of the project is estimated, always estimated to be 20 to 30 years, that doesn't mean it will. And um, it could, you know, be abandoned at any time. I'm not suggesting that's the case here or that's likely here, but the, the whole point of this is to protect the town from the uncertainties that the future will bring. Uh, so it's in, you know, the ordinance is pretty clear about the things that the planning board should do, but what's clear to me is that the town needs to be protected. There has to be some form of surety, I think. Uh, it could be a lien uh, on the land, I would say, uh, so that sort of create a, uh, not a mortgage exactly, but a, a, a recorded instrument uh, that uh, before the property can be conveyed, uh, that would have to be dealt with. Um, with the town 
terms. I mean, that's an option. A surety uh, bond is an option. A letter of credit is an option. Uh, we, by the way, I've only been a solicitor for a little, little over two and a half years. We've already um, acted on a performance bond in a, in a new construction situation where we had to deal with the bank. I mean, it does happen here to call to call in a bond, and the town needs to be protected. And you know, I think. The overriding principle when you exercise your discretion is to protect the town in, in, in whichever manner you see fit. And, I, and certainly the applicant can, can you know, make suggestions on, on different ways, but I think those are the options. All right, thank you. So, Mr. Trombino, I, I understand not wanting to tie up capital. I, I get that 10 grand is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for me, and I, I would guess it's a lot of money for you as well. Um, so, would you be amenable to something like that, where we could take some sort of instrument uh, against the land in case something happened before it was transferred? I'm fine with that. Okay. I'm good. So I guess, um, Jim, brothers. to 
to the pre-application checklist. Mr. Russo and Greek has assured me that they can satisfy the checklist for a pre-application. I suppose the next step is up to the board whether you want peer review or not, uh, which had been suggested, which we have no objection to. Last engineering firm. Uh, sure, their bills will be uh, will be fair and adequate. We have no effort, no objection whatsoever to uh, cross an engineering act against uh, your expertise uh, at, at our expense. And the uh, peer review could take place uh, while the uh, application for master plan and preliminary plan at the same time. Everything done uh, concurrently. You know, this application is governed by uh, chapters 259 and 260. It's quite explicit uh, as to what can be done. And we, had, we would intend to proceed it along that fashion. Good report. Is, is that, um, are you finished, sir? Would you like to add There's more? There's not too much I can do with three yeah. applications. <laughs> well, I'm just checking, sir. <laughs> if you'd like me, like me to do more, I'd be glad to try. But I think I'm asking for a combination of a master plan and plumber. Okay. And if, you, and if you want peer review, we're okay with that. Okay. Uh, Rob? In my mind, the combination of the two uh, articles, or whatever they call them, that Mr. Nakar was proposed, aren't really clear in my mind as far as what they actually are. Uh, I have no problem with the applicant proceeding along. And they've done everything that has been asked of them so far, provided any information that was requested of them. So I'm comfortable with the way that they're operating. It's just, you know, they must have combined the two processes together, I'm not clear on the legal ramifications of that, but everything else, you know, I'm happy with. Jim, would you like to speak to that now? Well, a, a master plan is uh, traditionally looked at as a conceptual plan. Um, when it goes before the board, it lays out, um, typically it's, it's on a subdivision, and it lays out uh, conceptually what the subdivision is going to look like, the configuration of it, etc. Um, it's not detailed engineering work at that point, but it does, when it's approved by the board, it does vest the applicant in that particular layout and that particular density. Now, when the board approves that, that gives the developer the confidence to go forth and actually engineer the project. Okay, now, there could be septic systems involved with that. It could be road work and drainage involved with that. Again, this is something that you typically see in a residential subdivision. What we're dealing with here is a solar array. There's going to be no road, interior road work. Uh, that. Well, access drives, but right. it's not not a not a town it's not a town road. Road. Okay. Um, and um, uh, certainly no septic systems that goes along with this. No water supply issues, things of that nature. It's basically just going to be like drainage and whatnot. So, I suppose. Um, it would be fine in, in this instance to combine the two of them, but it's also it's also fine to keep them separate as well, and so that we have a conceptual layout of what the thing looks like. You can, you can certainly take it slow and, and, and separate them. Uh, they both have uh, hearings. The master plan has a public informational meeting, which has to be uh, noticed and whatnot. The preliminary plan would have a public hearing where it's, uh, it's a more formal notice that goes in the paper and notices go out by mail to people in the notice area. So it's, you know, it's one, uh, it's not uncommon to have uh, the two plans combined, but when you get into more involved projects like subdivisions, residential subdivisions, it, I, think it's, I think it's always preferable to keep them separate. Uh, the only time I'd really recommend seeing them Combined with something that's really simple, uh, 
it's not, it's not a lot involved in it. Uh, it, it. It might be classified as a major because they need a, uh, a variance or something like that. That's what gives it up to a major. So I suppose you could do it, you know, combine it in that instance. So you can do it here too. It's up to you how how uh, how uh, how meticulously you want to review this project. Um, so, but at the master, I'm sorry, I'm stealing your question, Ron. But but at that master plan stage, if our expert found something that they wanted to change, we'd be locked in. Yeah, I would say I would say the master plan does lock you in. Whereas whereas if the uh, our independent yeah. engineer uh, identifies something there. Um, at that point, that's, that's the way to catch it. I mean, but, but, but the town council has already locked it in prior to this meeting. Sorry, but that means you do your job for you. Thank you. Well, to a degree. <laughs> to, to a degree. This, is, this, is, this, this, this application, when it came before us for our recommendation to the council, was already in fine. In terms of engineering, layout, design, the council approved engineering layout and design the density and you know I don't mean to be this negative but we're just spinning our wheels here. We don't have anything to add or subtract to this project. It's already been completely designed and, and it's in an ordinance for that. I would disagree. Yeah. Because no offense no, 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 it's fine. I haven't because we haven't had our experts look at it yet. We haven't had an independent review. And maybe it's online. Maybe it's not. Well, I'm not saying it's all fine. I'm saying they have the right to do what's before us per the ordinance. So if our engineers found something that was wrong, I don't, I don't not know not. what good it would be. I don't know what good it would do. Well, that's an Unless they voluntarily yeah. agreed to change it. Okay. I guess it would depend on what what was wrong. Right. If some, if Crossman, whoever you select. Uh, find something wrong, for instance, with our wetlands permit. Then I go, we, we change that. I don't, you know. Oh, DEM already blessed. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They gave us a permit. Yeah, yeah. yeah no right. what, So anyway, to finish up my thought, I think you're way past master plan, so I have no problem at all with you combining. Most, uh, most developers, in, in going through the major land development, they seek master uh, plan approval first, so that they can get their conceptual plans approved and know that they're going to be okay in going to preliminary. In, in this case, uh, the, the project is designed and has been designed for six, seven months. We're not, we're not changing, we're not proposing to change anything, and we don't need that vested right that master plan gives you to go on to preliminary because we have Chapter 259 or chapter, chapter 260, which in, which in effect vests us. I mean, you can't take you can't take that away. It's a law. It's just it's an ordinance. Yeah, right. So <coughs> I hear that. I understand what Tom is saying. I absolutely don't buy into it. I would I would be remiss if I suggested that the planning board not pursue its duty here having an independent review not combine master and preliminary because I'm not convinced that the project, the way it's been designed, is going to fly. Until I hear from our independence, which I'm going to recommend in a moment, transcends Crossman, uh, I'm not convinced. If the town council has a way to do something and we have to live with it, great. I still feel the planning board has an obligation to do the right thing. I don't think we ought to be giving it up. Might be spinning our wheels, but I think we have an obligation to all those people. I think I, I, I think I, that's why we went to the master plan in the first place, was to get our independent review, to, to look at the project more thoroughly with, to understand the impact of this project. So I'm going to get a vote on the combined master
members of the public? Would you? Yeah? Uh, are we at three applications as members of the public allowed to speak? Yeah, I mean, I'm just asking yeah, a question. Conventionally, we allow members of the public to speak at three applications. Very well.
Would you like to comment in response here? Uh, yeah, I, I would. Uh, I'm a fair chairperson, sir. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for indulging. Uh, this this project's been designed for over six months. There's no change. It's going to be what it was. Not going to be changed unless the experts, your experts, tell us there's something wrong. Right. And that certainly can be done by combining both plan, master plan and preliminary. Master plan does absolutely nothing but giving us vested rights. And I maintain to you, we have vested rights. We have an, we have an ordinance that says we can do this. And I agree with Mr. Holberton's comments that it would be just duplication for no apparent reason if you come up, and if the master plan is approved, it gives us conceptual rights. We already have it. We, have, we already have it. You cannot get away from the ordinance. It is the law. It states that we can do this. And look, we want a good project just like everybody else. We go through this, we're, we're willing to submit to peer review, whatever you'd like, but to combine this out in two separate hearings accomplishes absolutely zero. So that, that's our position. We, we're willing to do the peer review and do uh, whatever the expert who you select and uh, the pre engineering agree upon. That's, that's fine with us, but I, I just don't see the reason for two hearings. It accomplishes nothing. Uh, would you like to comment regarding our experts? Should we have more discussion? I think you need to uh, nail down the combined master plan. Okay. That would be my advice. Thank you, sir. Um, so I guess we have to decide if we would like to have a motion for um, combining the master plan and the preliminary plan. Is anyone willing to make a motion? I'll make a motion to go the plan. As <coughs> uh, Mr. Macaron said, it's all been done. It's, Mr. Holbert said, the town council has already approved it. The plans are there. We've seen them. They're on file. The plans have been provided to other people around that be asking. We're well with this. Is, but the applicant has done what they've been asked to do every time. And I think we're just spinning our wheels by making two meetings, uh, two, two hearings for it. Just to save everybody's time and money in the town, all residents. I think we should go ahead and combine the two. Okay, that's a motion. Is there a second? Kevin, do we need a second before we have discussion? Well, that's the, that's the normal way to do it. So the Roberts rule said that it should be a, a second. And, and by the way, I've seen, I've seen people at public bodies second it just for the sake of having a discussion. Oh, All right, I'll second it. Okay. For discussion. Okay. That's, that's okay. what I did. All right. So, Al, I've got a question for you and Kevin. I think you're going to need to follow up the answer. Obviously, I completely agree with this being scrutinized by an, at our engineering firms that we pick ourselves. If, if and when that happens, can it happen if the master plan and preliminary are combined, or does that negate it then? Well, that's a great question. So we might differ a little bit on our philosophy as to why I think they should be separate, and what the input of the experts is really going to do. So I well, certainly- that was, that was my question for yeah, Kevin Adams. I certainly concur with Mr. Nacarato and yourself that the town council has essentially boxed us in by really doing our job for us. I consider it inappropriate, but that's the way it went down. However, if the experts come back and have a different opinion, even if the applicant is entitled to go forward, I believe that it's on the record that the project is faulty. And I consider that important. Might not be able to change it, but if we have adverse expert testimony, I think it weighs heavily in our favor. Kevin? If, if, if the independent review 
comes back that the drainage calculations are wrong, that the wetlands are wrong, et cetera, et cetera, one or the other. Can that, can their vested ordinance rights be amended? How does that work? Well, I, I'm not sure I agree with the wording of the question, but I can give you the answer that, that you're putting out there. Um, based on what Mr. Nakarado has represented tonight, which, as I understand it, is if the independent peer review determines that changes should be made, made to the present design, that they, they're perfectly willing to do that. If that's, if that's, if I understood him correctly, and if that understanding carries through these proceedings, and the board uh, votes to combine the two processes, with that understanding that if the peer review uh, calls for changes that the applicant uh, will, will go along with those changes, um, I don't see any problem with so what happens when the applicant decides that he's not going to change it? Well then, again, and that's why it's so important about my understanding of, of what has been represented here tonight by the applicant. And that argument would be waived. They're, they're already agreeing to do the changes. That's a condition of combining. Whatever the experts say? You know, it obviously all depends. But the expert says, the answer is no. The answer is no. I mean, how can I agree to that? I'm not, I'm not I don't asking, know what I don't know what I'm agreeing to. I'm not to. asking for you to, to agree to it. I would think it would be foolish. Yeah, okay. So listen, just because the town council has awarded them an ordinance doesn't mean I have to approve the project. I absolutely agree no, with that. So that's where I stand. I, I absolutely agree with that. The, the project, the layout, all the specifications, uh, apart from what's already set forth in the ordinance, um, have to be approved by the planning board. That's why it's here. So, so this is like what the stands. No, no, I, I, I just, I mean, in, in these kinds of things, and I understand the applicant is, is saying they don't want to agree to a plan check either, but we're talking about preserving rights uh, to, to appeal this or not appeal this, and I think that needs to be dealt with. Now, if the understanding um, I thought I had uh, is not accurate, then I think the board has it well within its discretion to separate the two paths. Excuse me, can I say something? I'm the applicant. Sure, absolutely. If I can help something. Okay. Under a plan development review, you wouldn't be locked into a master, master plan. Uh, in other words, I, the way I understand if it. If you did, but if I think what Tony's saying is if if this were handled on the development plan review, you would have much more leeway as we would. You can do the same thing under development plan review that you can under master well, land. That's, no, map, no, what, that's, no, why, no. that's why master map, a, mass, a major development doesn't fit this situation. No, no, Mr. Nakarano, it's not the subdivision tool that's at fault. It's the fact that you've been awarded an ordinance that really castrates the planning board. That's the problem. It's not the tool that we're using. I, I think you have latitude on the development plan review. I, think I, I, I really do. I mean, uh, no one's trying to put you in a box. Well, I'm afraid we're already in the box. But you, you, you can't take away from our what we have as, a, as an approval. No, that would not be my intention at all. The rules have been set, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I have to like the rules, right? No, certainly you don't have to like them, and you've, ex you've expressed your displeasure. Yes, but I would think that a better way of handling this would be on the development plan review than master this uh, major landowner. Because you've got the situation of, uh, what, what are you giving us on, on the major landowner? I, I, I can only lose. You, I, can, I hope we're not giving you anything else. You've been given plenty. Not in my position. No, I, I, don't, I don't mean to give you this. I mean, what's the end result? But, but Mr. Nakarada, we, that was our discussion last meeting. And just in lieu of the time and all of that, we, we, we put this on our path. We voted last meeting. This meeting, you're coming before us 
So we have we have a motion. We have a second. I still want the discussion. Okay. Plain okay. and simple. Okay. This peer review. Yeah. When do we have a right to ask for that? Right now. Okay. okay. So if the plan is combined, does that negate that right whatsoever? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's in my mind, I guess it just somebody said it slows the process down. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure that there's room. <coughs> in there. Well, if the experts come back and make a suggestion. As, I as to, do I. I don't want to give the farm away. Yeah. As do and I. Half the afternoon, come back and say, yeah, it's already too late. You, you know I was the first one to say, I can't believe what the Common Council did to the board. Why are we even here? Um, I just don't want to give up any of our rights, but I don't see how combining the two will just continue the meeting if we're not done. All right. All right. All right. All right. Excuse me. Oh, yes, sir. He spoke. Can I speak now? No, we're in the motion. Well, how come he came back this way? We had it. We had it in open session earlier, okay. sir. Okay. I'm here with this. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. You're welcome anytime. But okay. Yeah, just in lieu of the hour, sir. So we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Opposed. Opposed. So we keep them separate. We do. All right. Okay. So I did. Uh, 
part of that is just common sense to uh, why when is the law requires that. So it probably the town charter requires it. So anyway, uh, just bear that in mind. Um, uh, if we don't use the engineering firm that's already sort of on retainer for the town, then uh, we're looking at probably a public bid process that we need to be complied with that would involve invitations to bid. I understood exactly what you said, and not to circumvent that, but if we ask Crossman to incorporate your thoughts, which I agree with 100%, if I was Crossman, I would subcontract that out to someone. Well, that is certainly a workaround solution. Um, in my company, when, when we're not an expertise in some area, we subcontract it out. I understand. Let's just be really clear that I want an expert in those areas. As do I. So I don't want Crossman to pull out some junior engineer who has a degree in biology to fulfill this mission. Um, I would, we have, the town actually, uh, through an open RFP process, uh, procured the services of two on-call engineering firms. Crossman is one of them. BHB, a large firm, multidisciplinary firm is the other one. Now, now we can the, the town can call upon those firms for any engineering things it needs without the necessity of going out to bid because they've already given us prices for their services and the town has agreed to that. Okay? But in this particular instance, this might be a little bit different in that if the applicant is willing to accept an engineering firm that the board suggests, and once we find out their prices, their fees for their services, if the applicant is willing to pay for whatever firm you want, I, I don't see where we have to go out for a bidding of, of something like that. Well, I, I think we need to be careful um, in making assumptions that are not based on empirical evidence. Uh, in other words, I think um, I think the idea of subcontracting uh, needs to be looked at in terms of how that comports with the public bidding laws and requirements. I think if, if we, I didn't even know we had another, a second firm on retainer, certainly um, that could be looked at uh, as well um, to see if, if they would fit. Um, and I think it's reasonable um, to obtain uh, either through the public bidding process or if, if this other firm uh, can, can give an estimate uh, to run that number by the applicant without asking the applicant to sign a, a blank check. I, I'm not being an advocate for that. I'm just trying to right. think this through. I mean, I, I, I think it might be a little unreasonable to for the board not really knowing how much that kind of peer review expertise would cost just expect the applicant to agree to, to a blank check. I mean, I think... Well, we, don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. I'm going to get pricing yeah. no matter what. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they know what they're doing. As long as the board has decided to, to keep yeah. these uh, stages separate, yep. we're, we're going to proceed now to master plan. Yep. Okay. The applicant's going to prepare us a master plan. I'm going to look at it to see if it's complete. Now, the first meeting is going to be a public informational meeting on the master plan. We'll go through the required advertising process. They'll bring that master plan to the board. The board's going to look at it at that first meeting and determine precisely the elements of that plan that you want reviewed as you just laid out there, the particular elements that you want. Okay? And at that point in time, we can have prices from various firms. I can get Crossman's, BHB, we can contact uh, Mosaic. And at that first meeting, you can have a discussion with the applicant as to who they're willing to pay for and ex you know, accept and pay for. And not only that, the, the engineering consultant will have a clear idea of what their mission is when they get that master plan in front of them, what they are to look at and examine. So that, I think that's the, that's the point we want to have that discussion. I follow, and I, I, it's tough to argue against it. However, 
in this particular case, I, I think I have it almost signed uh, yeah. So look, there's already a wealth of information in front of us. The master plan isn't going to change. So why don't we start the peer review process now? Once you folks work out your arrangement, and by the way, I didn't mean to cloud the issue with Mosaic. If, an, if VHB can provide an, ex, an expert in these areas, I'm fine. I'm, I'm being bogged down with the legalities. Let's put down on paper for the applicant what we're going to request to them and let all you guys do. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. But, but I don't think we should wait until the master plan. No, I don't either. That, that's just... I mean, the master plan is, is done. I mean, it, it, you're going to get the same Let's plan. Let's do it now. Yeah. In unless, the left direction. Unless somebody but isn't clear on what they want to explore, then that's the same story. I, I was going to go to Ron next. So, Ron, are there other experts that you would like to review this project? So what, I mean, we discussed drainage. We discussed, I, I differ with my colleague. I think drainage is really important, especially because it's on that path road, or a major road coming through town. I, I, think it, I think it is just calculation, but we're going to do it again. So, well, so I, I think those, that is important. And what, what Crossman offers regarding swales and drainage, they found numerous instances to modify the last applicant from uh, this applicant on their other project. Right. So, right. I mean, engineering being what it is, I, I value Crossman's input in that also very large project. So, um, we have no problem with either Crossman or VHP. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Rob, was there anything else that you would like to add? Or? No, as long as we're this deep into this process, uh, there again, I'm happy with whatever engineering program everybody decides on. I agree with Mr. DiOrio, things that he has concerns with should be looked at and they should be explained to the engineering firm and the applicant. We want A, B, and C looked at and not just D. So that they know coming in, they're not getting blindsided and say, well, you didn't ask for this, so now we're going to go back over. They should know day one what they're being requested to do. So what we'd be asking now, just to be clear, is the engineering firm would have access to their current materials. But then at that point, they're going to be charging, right? Because they're, they're going to, that's going to be a charge. So is the applicant going to be agreeing to either of these charges from these, these firms? You can tell me how it's done. My understanding is we create a checklist. The engineering firm goes through the checklist, says, okay, I need this person for this many hours, comes up with a price, you folks talk, the applicant agrees, you authorize the work. Applicant agrees. Okay. So is that in a nutshell how it should work? The top, well, the applicant's going to pay the top, right? Yeah. The but we need a scope to hand to the engineering firm. Absolutely, and that's why that's why I would prefer it. Now, if I can just back up a little bit. Okay. It would have been it would have been appropriate to combine the two stages. That that is a that is a legitimate way to proceed with this. Okay? Because you're by combining them, you're bringing a master and a preliminary to the table at one time. They're vested in nothing. When the independent engineer looks at that combined submission. Conceivably, things could change on that. Okay. Now, same thing can happen if we keep them separate, as the, as the board just quoted. We're going to have a master plan come in here. I'm not. I'm not going to submit that that master that everything is done. It's all done, sealed, and delivered. If 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 you want a consultant to look at the features that you just mentioned, such as the, the forestry and the habitat and this and that. I would submit that where those solar arrays have been placed on, on conceptual plans right now could conceivably change at the master plan level. They, those, are, those, those, those posts that are in the ground, those, those, those very locations of those arrays could change based upon a consultant's walk of the property. So, so that's the nice thing about separating these things is that you would slow the train down you brought a consultant in early in the ball game to pretty much review, and things could change at the master plan level. So I, so I, the way I would do this is I would have the folks prepare a master plan, 
go through the necessary advertising for a public informational meeting. The public will have, go in this group, the public is going to have ample time to examine this project in two stages, okay? But at the first meeting, have a, come up with a, a list of things that you want a consultant to look at, and then we will go out and, and with the applicant's consent, hire a consultant to look at those things, and then when we come back for the second meeting on the, on the master plan, this is, this is not going to be a master plan that's going to be approved in one night necessarily. It could take three months to approve a master plan, okay? So at the second meeting, the consultant will come back with a review, a cursory review at least, okay, of what you've asked us to see, and we'll proceed that way. That's, we're going to go incrementally, step by step by step, and we'll see how how the plans that they've prepared to date conceivably could change, because they could change. Okay. So that's the way I would go about it. Like I said, difficult to argue against it. Okay. Okay. I think we should send the applicant away tonight with some direction of what we're going to be expecting for the reviews. And I think I think that ball should get rolling. I mean, every time I look at this plan, I get nauseated. So I'm not a fan of it. But I'm a fan of you having the right to the use of your land. And I'm a fan of the laws that have been put in place, even though I don't agree with them. You have those laws in place, and I'm not here to obstruct you from using those laws. I'd like to move you along. You know, I, I, I'm not terribly opposed to slowing the process down so everyone has a has a little bit more say in it, but they should have had their say already at the town council public hearings. I don't like to appreciate that. <clears throat> so if you want to create a checklist now, as I said, I'm okay. Well, you seem to be quite up on it already. Well, so, I, I know what I want. If and, other folks are in the same place. And I just had the, the, the aquifer wellhead protection thing to add to that if it wasn't enough. So we have the drainage, drainage especially with the swales and, and, the, and the main roads. Uh, we have the uh, biologists. Lumped into one big category, forest loss, impacts to prime farmland, habitat, changes to pre-existing hydrology. <coughs> That all falls under the biological wetland. I think we should add landscaping to the yes. checklist because there have been, I think, I, I think this is the application. People are telling me that we're not going to be able to see it from Main Street. We're not convinced, but I think we need somebody to weigh in. <coughs> and also, uh, especially on this side, there's so many houses. I'd like to understand. Um, I don't know if you can tell us that. I'm not exactly sure what Crossman would be able to say. Um, are they going to? Are their proposed buffering is actually going to do anything? Because it's up to the coast. So I don't know. You look at me like maybe that's insane. There's no way they're going to do that. Well, to see what? Uh, see how the yeah. neighbors feel about right. Maxon Hill. No, I know how they feel about Maxon Hill, but um, whether or not we're there, their buffers are going to be adequate. Yeah, I, look at, I look at the plans I did again this afternoon. Um, it looks along like on Route 3 Main Street there, they only have two relatively small sections of solar arrays separated by, uh, by a, quite a distance. Most of their arrays seem to be very close to Max and the Roads from what I saw today. So, so they could be right. They could be right that the, this could be screened pretty well from Route 3. So I would doubt that, but we don't know. We don't have a 3D uh, drawing of this or, or any, any. So maybe we should uh, just revise that. And I'm not quite sure I see that. I see a solar array 25 feet from the road here. Yes. Anyway, well, landscaping slash screening. So not so much a critique of what they're planting, but more uh, a critique of their screening methodology, both on Route 3 and uh, I have one more thing. It came up on another project. <clears throat> the applicant was saying that the solar panels were better than housing. And his argument was, was well, well received. Now we know 
what housing will do to this. We know what a well will do to this property. We know what a septic system will do to this property. And I'm specifically referring to, um, on your SAGE environmental uh, maps, the groundwater and wellhead protection areas. One of my concerns is that we don't know what clear cutting and the solar array is actually going to do to the, uh, it's labeled non-community wellhead protection area and groundwater recharge area. I would like somebody to, with knowledge of solar systems, to look at this area as SAGE environmental data and review their documents and tell me that while there'll be some runoff, this water is going to be recharged back into the soil, and not just from a drainage perspective, but from an environmental perspective, kind of adding to what you just said, uh, you know, about, about farmland use and, and habitat and things like that. Because one of my concerns, and it may be unfounded, just my common sense tells me when you clear cut 20 or 30 acres and put metal and plastic there, that something's got to change. You know, something's got to change in that environment, whether it's just animals or does it does it hurt the recharge area? We don't, we don't know that. And, and I'd like someone that has the ability to look into that to uh, at least look me in the face and say, we don't know either. <laughs> you know. So did I say that clearly enough for you to mm -hmm. transmit that to them? Mm -hmm. right. That's all I got. So can we have a discussion with the applicant tonight if, if uh, on a consultant, maybe we can get them rolling on this early? Um, sure. would, would, uh, in other words, would uh, VHB or Cross would be acceptable? Would, would Mosaic be acceptable to you? I've never dealt with Mosaic. Well, you, my my instinct would be they have probably have most of the services you're going to find because they're, 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 they're that deep. They have a deep problem. That's logical. That's logical. Yeah, it's not money to water that mosaic. I threw that out there only because I think I had I was not aware of that we still had PHP on the tap. And uh, while well, well, I know cost me well, I don't think they're deep in this area of expertise. If VHB can pull it off, I'm perfectly good. Or bringing somebody under their contract you can. So you want you want to get going? Oh, yeah. 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 They can do everything. Yeah. Every, if you got one engineering firm, they can look at all the pieces and see how they fit. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, okay. Yep. We're not familiar with Mosaic. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. So we, we have a crisis. Yeah, fine. The HBA is fine. Okay. So we have a moment to get yeah. it going. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Now is master plan continuing to a specific day? Uh, we haven't had master It's not continued. We haven't had it yet. Master plan. Yeah. Right. This is a pre act tonight. Yeah. But so you, uh, uh, is there a continuance to the next level? No, you, you're going you're gonna to prepare a master plan submission yeah. to me. I'm going to look at it and compare it against the checklist to see if it's complete. Mm -hmm. When it's complete, I'll issue a certificate of completeness on this project, and then you can go forth and advertise it properly. Okay. So we don't know that this is going to happen in October yet. Okay. 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 Very good. Are you clear, sir? I'm clear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next order for business is a two lot major subdivision master plan, 189 lot 22, 56 Woodville Alton Road, Kelsar LLC is our applicant. Good evening. How are you? Not too bad. How are you doing? Good. I said you here. Is it hot? Probably. Probably. It's okay. It's okay. It's alright. That's good. Okay. Uh, my name is Kelly Percasa. I'm here representing uh, Alsar LLC, which is the owner of the property at issue here. Um, the last time I was here, I believe it was a couple of months ago, um, we were proposing a two-lot subdivision which uh, went over like the proverbial bloom. Uh, the plan has been uh, reworked. It's now a, uh, a two-lot cluster subdivision which did not require any variances from the, from the zoning board. And uh, so we're here just on the, uh, the master plan tonight. 
um, each of the proposed blocks would have sufficient frontage and also sufficient area for a cluster development. Um, and I understand the regulation requires 30, at least 30% of the property to be devoted to, uh, to open space. And in this instance, uh, we're going to be devoting um, actually well over 50%. Um, in the rear of the properties, which would abut the, uh, the river in the back. Uh, we are going to require a couple of waivers. The property is um, around 9.5 acres in area. The regulations require a minimum of 10 acres, however, um, under the regulations, the planning board does have the discretion to, uh, to vary that, uh, depending on historical and topographical land features. Uh, we we're also going to be asking for a waiver from the 100-foot uh, buffer around the perimeter. We're going to be looking for a, uh, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong here, but a 25-foot no cut zone and uh, a 50 foot uh, uh, no cut zone as well. Am I getting that right? And the, uh, the planning board also has the, uh, the discretion to vary that. Uh, so those are the only uh, things which uh, we would uh, require. We're also going to have to, uh, under the regulations, and the regulations speak in terms of, uh, of a mandate so much a uh, discretion that we have to, we would have to, unfortunately, create a homeowners association. Um, and uh, we, we, we certainly, uh, we certainly will do that. Um, other than that, I believe that the, the project is, uh, is relatively straightforward. The, the open space area is in the, uh, uh, I would say, the, the rear portion of the property. Which is going to be adjacent to the uh, to the river. There is a significant amount of, uh, of wetland on this property, if I'm reading them that correctly. Um, and uh, it's just uh, two lots. There is uh, no constraints to access to the roadway. Um, I believe this would uh, fit all of the requirements of uh, 452360, which now apply to the National Stage. Or is any questions or comments that you have to fill in? Do you want to start with you, Ron? I mean, this plan looks to me as you know, almost breaking this down into three lots instead of the two that were proposed before, correct? No, no there aren't, aren't uh, three lots. We've got the, uh, we would have the two lots, two residential <coughs> lots, and a, uh, an open space lot. That would be non buildable conservation easement over the open space. Who would that belong to? Would now, are both of these properties going to belong to you or family members? They belong to, to each of the uh, respective homeowners with a conservation right over it. So they want have full them. access to the open space and, uh, okay. on both lots. All right, thank you. I'm a little confused. Jim, is this a, we're at master plan? Yes. Is this a public informational meeting? Uh, we had it uh, a couple of months ago. Um, we had that. This has changed totally. That was a two lot subdivision. Yeah, well, it's, it's still a two lot subdivision, just a different form. Just a different form of it. So has it been advertised properly tonight? It hasn't been, has been re it has been re advertised in this particular form yet. No, it was advertised properly for the first night that this came before. So is it okay? That's what my question is. Um, I would say I would say it is. I mean, it can change. Uh, you know, these plans can change uh, as a result of you know public hearing. Did, did, we, did we continue it the last meeting? Would the would the public have known? Yes. It was continued. It was a proposed as a two lot subdivision with a uh, recommendation to the zoning board for a frontage variance. Yeah. Because of the input from the board, that they've been overworking us, and it's been too hot. I can't remember that flat. Well, I can't. We went to a pre-application 
um, meeting. Some of the board members were not there, and it was recommended to follow the master plan with, with a uh, frontage variance uh, for one lot. So we returned to the master plan with that request. And, uh, at that meeting, it was, was felt that um, there could be all differences, different designs. Uh, a compound was considered at that meeting. Um, going back to the office, working with Kelly, we looked harder at the cluster development ordinance and found out it would be more compliance. Uh, whether there wasn't any density variances that would be needed as we would with a compound, uh, incorporating the compound ordinance. So this is more in conformance with the subdivision regulations. So we still have two lots. The frontage off of uh, 56 North Hill, Walton Road. Um, but now we're proposing open space uh, and you give up my question though. We're all ready to proceed. I believe so. Okay, that's all I that was my only question. That was that part of the question. I don't know the continuance myself, but yeah. if, the, if the word is that it's okay, it's okay. Yeah. And I don't I don't think it needed to be. I don't think it, it didn't need to be. It was the public hearing. I mean public hearings have to be well, continued to a well, date. Sir, it, was it was it a noticed meeting? Did they have to yeah. send cards back at the for, time? For, for so how did those people know that we were meeting tonight? That's my question. They don't. They they're not required to know. Okay. All right. You can bring. I mean, when you're when you're we're reviewing a master plan tonight. Yeah. Okay. Master plans don't necessarily have to come back to the board in the next the very next month. They could come back two months later. Yeah. But but they have to come back within the review period. That's right. ninety days. It has to be the city. Okay. As long as you guys are younger than I am. Um, secondly, I'll see this as a cluster. I've been around for a long time, and I've never, I've never seen a cluster use um, a town road as their only road, and it just seems to me like you're using our ordinance to get a road front lot with, without the required frontage. Tom, you're absolutely correct. However, Tom Quan Road utilized the same. Yep. Right. Yep. So while it flies in the face of what we see as a conventional cluster, I'm afraid this person. No, I agree with you. Unfortunately, that's a big Can you discuss the buffers? I'm sorry, we didn't have time. Um, yeah, for now. So can you discuss the buffers and how that is not going to agree with our ordinances? There's recommendations that there be a 100 foot buffer around the perimeter of the site. The perimeter of the site would be this northerly, uh, southerly boundary, the northerly boundary, and the, and the road frontage. There's also uh, language within the ordinance that allows for discretion of the planning board. A 100 foot buffer would not allow for uh, development of, of, of any of the lots uh, given the shape of the parcel. We have more than what's required for open space. Uh, we're protecting the most critical areas of the site, the, the wetland, wetlands along the Wood River. Uh, we're providing, with a 25 foot no cut buffer, so we're providing that uh, deeded uh, screening. Uh, and along the 50 foot, along the frontage, we're providing a 50 foot no cut buffer that will provide for the streetscape. So let me chime right in my assessment of the buffer request. I think it needs to be modified because I think, in fact, you can incorporate, while we do, I certainly concur, we do have the right to waive provisions of this, similar to what the zoning board might do. We're looking to grant the least waiver possible. I think you can appreciate that. I think you can do a 100 foot buffer on the west side with exceptions for driveways and septic systems. I think the planning board might consider that caveat. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. Uh, the septic systems, the existing septic system falls within that area. Yep. The, the proposed one might be able to be brought back. Um, certainly the houses are well outside of that. There we go, so 100 feet on the west side. I think you can do 50 feet on the south side. I appreciate that you've got a proposed lot footprint there and a 
while I think you can do some adjustment, 50 feet does not seem to be out of the ordinary. I think you can do 100 feet on the north side. Tell me what the distance is from the property line to that approximate driveway location. Lot number one. Uh, it's listed as 90 feet deep to the house. Okay, so we can take, well, that's to the house. So we can take. Uh, that's an existing driveway. Take house. 100 feet and we can exclude the existing driveway. And you can certainly do 100 feet on the east side because that's the road. Well, our property line is, is um, so deep from the perimeter. So the, the whole east side is open space. Right. So you can do, in fact, you can come very close to putting a 100 foot buffer around this entire site if the planning board is agreeable to uh, exclude certain existing and proposed elements such as driveways, septic systems, etc. If the planning board is agreeable to that, I think we have a work on that would put a better taste in my mouth. And then uh, just a couple of other comments. Uh, you need to include the 200 foot riverbank wetland, which, based on my elementary sketching, intrudes into the open space area, so that calculation would need to be revised. In addition, I'm not exactly clear on how much usable open space is really being offered here. Is it really the 107,000 square feet? Because the open space is clearly not 5.6 acres. You would need to exclude the regulated areas. The total acreage is 5.6. Correct. And then excluding the uh, three acre wetland is 2.6. So shouldn't it be 2.9? I don't know the exact square footage out, but it's, it's um, 3.1 acres of wetlands, it's 2.47 acres of uplands. So I think it should be. So that's 5.6 acres total. 5.57 acres total. Well, anyway, as you revisit those calculations, perhaps you can make the lots smaller, right? Because you have plenty of space on the lots. And you can satisfy the open space criteria. If my calculation is incorrect, well. Okay, we're exceeding the open space by this design plan and the preliminary plan. We can yeah. look at it closer, but we're not asking for any waivers from the minimum open space. Yeah. And, and if, I, if I may, I'll, I'll try to in, improve the, uh, the buffers to 50 foot on the south boundary, but I'd like the chance to, to review that um, in design. We'll come back to the board and there might be a variable open space. I mean, uh, buffer. And, and I think the planning board might be agreeable to that. You know what I'm doing, I'm trying to ask. Well, well, I don't think there's an objection to granting some waiver. I would like it to be the least possible. So, it's the first step. Okay. Are you sure? No, I could go on for a while. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess we have to decide, to, are we going to grant these waivers? Wait, wait. So would the, um, would the board prefer to see a revised master plan brought back to the uh, board here? Or, or make the changes as suggested? I'm sure that Mr. Duhamel knows what I'm after. Uh, if, I, if I'm speaking for the board, I don't need to speak out of turn, but if my thoughts are uh, agreeable to the board, I'm pretty sure that this is doing it. Just, just so we're all clear. So we're going to try to increase the buffer along Woodville Road to 100 feet. We're going to try to increase the buffer on the north property line to 100 feet. And we're going to try to increase the southerly area to at least 50 feet. But it might be variable depending upon was it the southerly one that was? The northerly one is 93 feet to the house, so I'll need to access around the house and the, the driveway that exists. So that could, if I can vary that 100 feet and then go back to 75 and then go back to 100. So just to be clear, we're talking about open space right now, right? Open space which is going to be owned by a homeowners association. Open, 
open space that will allow either one of those members of that association to walk through that open space close to close to another house. Technically. That's what the regulation says, yes. <clears throat> it's a weird question. Yes. And I again appreciating the fact that it is unique. Uh, we only have two I would be amenable to reviewing the open space uh, language so that maybe something creative could be developed where we're not compromising the privacy of something. I'll leave that to council. We don't have any intention of using this. Any conservation? Well, I was really focused on uh, the buffering that goes to closer to the buildings. Okay, so are we talking about open space or buffering? Or no cut buffer? So if we're talking about no cut buffer, that's different from open space. Well, I, I, would, I would not be yeah, thinking buffer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're okay. talking about that. Okay, then I'll walk on one of the. Alright, it's okay. And to champion a little bit of your cause, it's absolutely in keeping with the existing neighborhood to the south. I mean, yes. we, have, we have 100 foot, 50 foot frontages on those houses, and you're bordering that property. So that would be the best argument to point in my direction. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Payback? I'll express every concern I have, and more. Members of the public? Yes. Uh, my name is Joe Morrell, and I just want to mention something in general. What's your last name? Morrell, how do you spell it? M O R E A U. And the first name is Joe. Where do you live, Joe? Old Depot Road, Oak Valley. Old Depot Road. They refer to me as Average Joe. Okay, okay I'm just trying to be polite to you, sir. Um, is it okay if I go now? Don't well, be mean and say no, I'll leave it up to me. Uh, 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 <laughs> why are you being mean to him? Huh? Why are you being chicken? Hey, 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 no, hey, tell us, tell us. We're good. We're good. We're good. Let me have the podium. Okay, may I stand over here, please, so I can use the mic? Sure. Thank you. Go ahead. I appreciate it. <laughs> Some members of the town council have put planning board in a difficult position. Um, not all, and I, I do that myself sometimes, I'll say the, the entire town council, but some members of the town council have put you in a really bad position. I mentioned the fact, not in general, about this project, but... Oh, sir, then. I, it, is, it does pertain to this project also, about slowing down the process. Uh, I understand that you put a time limit on each project, I understand that, but in my opinion, some develop, not all, some developers come in and try to tell you how to do your job. It's very difficult as it is. I appreciate the planning board's effort in trying to protect the residents of Hopkinton. I would like to see where these projects, you really can have the time needed uh, that you require to really protect the residents because as a resident, um, I feel like they're really coming in and telling you how to do your job. And that's, 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 excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, but we're, we're really just referring to this project. We're just following our plans. So right. I, I, yeah. I agree, it's but right. I, I believe some of this applies to this project. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this, this, this application? Okay. So, the next stage of what we would have to do is, we have to decide um, if we agree with waivers, which I think we do, as we've discussed, and whether or not we're going to be approval of the master plan, and if we can make the positive findings of the seven standards, because this is the stage we're at, correct? So I guess I have to decide, you need, we need to decide if we'd like to make a motion 
for approval of this as a master, master plan contingent upon. Um, Does that automatically uh, approve the waivers? I think we should incorporate the waivers as part of the whole part of the two sets of motions. So I'd like to entertain a motion. Ron, would you like to have a go at a motion? Let me, uh, Al will walk you through it. Just clear my head a little bit. I think the things that were proposed by Mr. DiOrio are more than valid. Uh, this gentleman here, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Uh, Christian Hamill with the Creek Engineering. Thank you. Uh, he's been very forthcoming. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of everything with the stipulations brought forth by the board incorporated into the motion. Okay. So in order for us to make a motion, um, for it to be official, we, we have to say you're going to make a motion to approve this project, the approval of the master plan, um, but we have to state our findings of fact about the correct. Correct. So these are these guys here. That's the, the part that being new on this. Yeah, well this is, you don't do it until you do it, Ron. So we're good, we're gonna take the time this evening, so go ahead. Okay, I make a motion to approve the master plan and contingent upon board meeting, making positive findings on the following standards. Uh, the proposed development is consistent with the comprehensive community plan. Uh, the proposed development is in compliance with the standards and provisions of the municipality's zoning ordinance. There will be no significant negative environmental impacts from the proposed development. The subdivision as proposed will not result in the creation of individual lots with any physical constraints to the development that building on those lots according to the pertinent regulations and building standards would be impactable. I would like to also add that it was pointed out uh, there's better precedent set on Tom Park Road and the other properties on that road are less than what these uh, proposals are. Uh, I move we approve it. Three, three more items, Ron. Three more items. Next page, page four. Five, page six, four. and seven. Fold. Okay. All proposed land developments and all subdivision lots have adequate and pertinent physical access to the public street. Lot frontage on a public street without physical access shall not be considered in compliance with this requirement. The proposed development provides for safe circulation of pedestrian and vehicular traffic, for surface water runoff control for suitable building sites and for preservation of natural, historical, or cultural features that contribute to the attractiveness of the community and the design and location of streets, building lots, utilities, drainage improvements, and other improvements in such subdivision shall minimize flooding and soil erosion. Okay. Okay. So that's a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And so I will entertain the second motion with regards to the waivers for this project. Mr. Yeah, I'll make a, uh, a motion to uh, approve two waivers. <clears throat> One, a reduction in the minimum parcel size from 10 acres to 9.5, based on the fact that the property of less acreage is suitable or such a waiver by virtue of its unique historical character, topography, and or land features. And the second waiver, originally requested as a 25 foot no cut, will be expanded to a variable width buffer to be substantially 100 feet on the west side, 50 feet on the south side, 100 feet on the north side, and 100 feet on the east side, subject to the applicant uh, applicants more precise design of the two lots. A motion for a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
next item on the agenda is a two lot, a two lot buyer subdivision free application, AP 18, lot 33, 46 Scott Hill Road. The Gardner Family Trust is our applicant. Oh, did I skip? Oh, gee, I did the wrong one. I'm sorry, I was a little headshot. Oh, no, I, I'm so sorry. Um, it's, again, it's, it's been a long day. Um, I'm, I, pardon. Our next item on our agenda under new business is a three lot minor subdivision preliminary plan AP 17, lot 16. This is Sawmill Road. Robert H. Goodwin is our applicant. Hello. Ron Goodwin is here. How is Goodwin is here? Okay. It counts. <laughs> My name is Bill Dowdell, Dowdell Engineer in Charlestown, Rhode Island. Um, this is not a solar farm. It's a two lot, straightforward subdivision, no waivers requested. Um, we're proposing to subdivide the northern portion of the Goodwin's property. Um, the address of the house is 15 Sawmill Road. Um, the north and the south end of the property is a relatively high hill that we're planning to split into two lots and leave the existing house at 15 Sawmill Road as it stands today. And um, it's really to take care of the family trust. Um, this property at one time included the Whispering Pines campground. Um, by the Goodwin family. Uh, that was split off. Uh, of course, it's under separate ownership today. The design of the subdivision um, is based on staying away from the wetlands as far as we possibly can. Um, we're outside of the 200 foot riverbank to the Moscow Brook. Um, there is a sluice way that was built. That's one of the things why it was called Sawmill uh, Road, is there was a sawmill right uh, just to the south of the school square. Um, we're obviously, obviously not doing anything on that lot. It's simply to split off two new lots to the uh, south of the existing house. The road is a 33 foot two rod road, with the exception of a widening that took place. I think it was in the late 80s or early 90s where the road used to go between the house and the barn and the barn is no longer there. Um, so you have a 50 foot right of way from uh, this position all the way to the south and then the 50 foot runs back into the 33 foot right of way. Um, and uh, as you know, if you've ever driven out there, the, the road was rebuilt. Uh, must have been, I don't know, five or ten years ago. So, we have separate house permits on each lot, each house being four bedroom design. And um, the only challenging part about the, uh, about the site is the driveways are going to be probably 15 to 20 percent. Um, Right now, we're showing the schematic. Uh, I imagine the driveway on lot number two will end up uh, getting lightened somewhat uh, when the person goes to build on the lot. We had excellent soil conditions of being at the top of the hill and uh, two, two conventional septic system <coughs> designs. Um, it's a relatively wooded site, a lot of tall pines and that sort of thing. Um, other than that, it's a very straightforward conventional site. I go by this piece of property all the time on my bike. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely piece of property. Actually, the best part of this map is 
and you go down Sawmill Road, that's a, that's a really steep hill over the two-lane um, bridge down there. That's, that's a good um, stretch cut. Members of the board, Ron. Uh, I can see no problems with us. They seem to be doing everything that they're supposed to do. Just one your road frontage. Placement of the buildings seems to be fine. I would have to say a little bit. Just have you you've done a test hole site suitability? You know it's yeah. We actually you haven't done the you haven't done the septic design yet. Though. Oh yeah, we, both both lots are permitted individually, and we try to avoid the subdivision yeah. suitability because they're existing for each lot. So I'm good to go. So you got uh, OWTS on lots one and two. One and two. What's the status of the uh, septic on three? Um, I don't really know how that was approved. I, I did know the, notice that the well is located to the north of the house, but I'm, I'm not sure um, if it's been redone or um, yeah. no the house is just painted. It was it, the the house was extensively rehabbed back in 1994, and a new septic system was put in the back. Okay, that's what we need. Thank you very much. Welcome. That was the only first question. Mr. Move the planning board, approve the preliminary plan, and delegate final plan approval to the administrative officer. Prior to any approval, the planning board must make the positive findings of the following. Each subdivision shall be consistent with the requirements in comprehensive community plan and or shall satisfactorily address the issues where there may be inconsistencies. Each lot in the subdivision shall conform to the standards and provisions of the Hopkinton zoning ordinance. There will be no significant negative environmental impacts of the proposed development as shown on the final plan with all the required conditions of approval. The subdivision as proposed will not result in the creation of individual lots with such physical constraints to development that building on those lots according to pertinent regulations and building standards may be impractical. All proposed land developments and all subdivision lots shall have adequate and permanent legal access to the street. Each subdivision shall provide for a safe circul circulation of pedestrian and vehicular traffic, for surface water runoff control, for suitable building sites, for preservation of natural, historical, or cultural features that contribute to the attractiveness of the community. The design and location of the streets, building lots, utilities, drainage improvements, other improvements in each subdivision shall minimize flooding and soil erosion. The motion made a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Now we are on to the two lot fire subdivision pre application, AP 18, lot 33, 46 Scuff Hill Road. The Gardner Family Trust is our applicant. And 
the reason that uh, we've come up with this uh, particular uh, shape is that the exterior perimeter of the overall parcel limits us on uh, where we can build. And then we also have existing residents and outbuildings on the site already that is going to dictate uh, some site and setbacks. And the intent of the uh, subdivision here is to create a second building lot that, that is going to be used for family work of the trust to uh, build some of the residents. So when we came up with the, uh, this overall concept, uh, we started by looking at what happens if we just make this a square, which would be a conditional type of shape. We're short on area. We're short. We're only got about 60,000 square feet to do that. Then we also had to come up with a setback that would conform with the existing houses, which led us to the green line. And then in order to get the additional 20,000 square feet for zoning, for area, we come up with this handle. Um, so, as presented, it certainly is a non conventional line configuration. It does conform with all the zoning requirements. In the area, it conforms with the zoning requirements of frontage. You know, we're not asking for any changes there. And we don't have any issues with uh, site or setbacks to the buildings over there. That's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much the, the presentation here. Um, and we were looking for your comments on this before we actually did a formal application um, in front of the board, go through all the necessary soil evaluations that we would have to do, uh, weapons, etc. What we have to look into. Carlos? Jim? So this is a conventional two lot subdivision. That's correct. And you're not asking for any, any variance from any of our rules or regulations. No. Does the planning board have the ability or the authority to grant a waiver for proposed lot two for under the 80,000 square feet, or would they have to go to the zone? Right. Okay. Come on. But right along that same line of questioning, which is something else, over right there. So. I appreciate that there is an existing dwelling there today that the planning board doesn't really have too much to say about. However, once they come before us, is this application up for the zoning board to grant the variance simply because they're now involved in the subdivision process? I don't know. I mean, to be honest. Why would they need to go to the what, zone? What variance do they need? Front, frontage. They have frontage. They have frontage. No, no, no. No, uh, they're within the 60 foot front yard setback for buildings. From the pre existing, existing house? The pre existing house. Yeah. So my question is even though I recognize that the house is there today, we would have nothing to say about it did they not come before the board. The fact that we're now part of the equation, does it gotcha. open the door? I, I, I don't know, have you thought on that? Have you thought about that? Well, my, my thoughts are, uh, just the, the practicing that I've been doing in the past, is that what we have here is what I would call a pre-existing non-conforming use. Uh, Andrew, any idea how long that house has been there? A very long time. Mm -hmm. I think it was built in the 1700s. So it's probably there prior to any uh, zoning in its past. Yeah, I'm certainly not debating that fact. It's more, once you start down this process, are we obligated to direct it to the zoning? Anyway, I don't need an answer right now. It's a pre-application. I'm just throwing that out there as a thought. The yeah, that's is, exactly why we're here. Yep, the answer out. is no, that's not applicable. I don't have any issue with Quite honestly, I'm embarrassed that we still have this in the ordinance, the whole width to lot ratio thing. 
you and I are used to dealing with geometry that doesn't necessarily conform to two and a half to one. So I certainly don't have any issue with the way you have chosen to try and adhere to our regulation. I just want to add that I had uh, the zoning official take a look at this plan and uh, she had no issues with it from the zoning perspective. Uh, again, the way, the way we look at it is the uh, existing home is where it is. So that's, that's really not an issue. The issue is the new lot we're creating. What are we doing? Are we creating any nonconformities? I mean, if we weren't doing a subdivision at all, you, you're not going to put people through zoning boards. I mean, that's, that is where it is. It's on a conforming lot. It's grandfather. We have no issues with that. That's the formal opinion. I'm good with it. And the reason why they're here tonight is be, before they go forth and design a septic system for that lot, they want to make sure that that lot is acceptable to the planning board. So. Right. I, I have to ask you the question. I have to agree that makes perfect sense to me. What should you say? Okay. Good. Okay. I have a weird lot. <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> so, and, you know it's, it's inconvenient at time. It's kind of weird, like half my yard in the front of my house. Planning board isn't fine, but so I, I get it. But, uh, so I'll put Anybody else? Okay. Do you have enough from us, sir? I'm, I'm done. Yes. Okay. I think oh, the know. audience? Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. It's late. Yeah, I just have a question. Uh, and it's just, I just don't know. Um, when you have to figure out these lots, and it, it makes you know reasonable sense to just make a square and make this one plain. Um, I mean, I live in a small lot, half acre lot, and it's lovely. Um, and I know you don't do that all the time, nor do you want to. But it seems common sense as you just square it off and not do that panhandle because that's kind of weird. That was my first question. Yeah. Did we have the authority? to grant the bearing a waiver on square footage. Because and I didn't really get an answer. Yeah, I mean, that would be a zoning. That would be a zoning. You can't create a substandard yeah. right. You can right. do a lot of things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not anymore. We but the zoning board could make it a normal uh, square. Well, my feeling on the, the request that if, if we ask for relief for area zoning, that's what we would need to be doing is ask for relief. Um, I've heard Al say a couple times tonight that when you ask for relief, you ask for the least amount of relief necessary. And you're usually asking for relief because of hardship. Well, in this situation, you can get everything that you have to have. Other than, other than I agree with you, it's, it's non-conventional. Non well, even, even if you shorten it and say that's the garden stage.
Wild and Scenic Study Committee is seeking from the Hopkins Employment Board a letter of support to um, that the town will adopt the Scrooge plan, but the town has already adopted the Scrooge plan by actually the town council. Uh, we're hoping to bolster our application to Congress for the Wild and Scenic designation, which has been done by Act of Congress. So this is uh, something I came before the board a couple of months ago about, but we got pushed due to other projects taking a lot more time. Um, we're just hoping that we can get the board support. I hope that you've had time to review the plan on the website. I didn't print it out because it's, it's near 200 pages, um, but you'll see that there's a lot of pre-existing um, protections for the watershed at the state and local levels. Um, it also has some suggestions as well for future uh, stewardship plans. Um, but I'm happy, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And the question I would have would be do you have a sample letter that you can put before us so that we can execute it? I would move that we direct the clerk of the planning board to write such letter. And <laughs> I, I have a template that uh, I've given to other boards and commissions. Um, I can certainly use that. Uh, it basically just has the, the date and the motion was made and then the, the board supports the plan. Would you need a motion from us? Would the board like to, or do we, do we have any discussion? Do we have any questions for Sean? No. No. Members of the audience, would you like to comment on us before we take our vote? Are we good? We're good. Okay. Um, I just take a motion. For letter of support. Uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we direct the clerk to prepare a letter of support for execution. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you very much for all of your work. As soon as you can put it together, if the planning board is amenable, I'll put a hand out on it and be done. Okay. Thank you very much. And I, I added the next item of agenda um, is discussion of the August 27th Town Council workshop um, with the Office of Energy Resource, and up close enough, on model solar ordinances. And I put this on the agenda um, because. I heard some interesting things for the part of the meeting that I was there. And I know Barbara was there. I hardly you were there as well. And so um, I know other members of our of our board were there. And so I just wanted to put it out there. We wanted to take a few minutes to discuss what we had heard and think about next steps going forward and what could we be doing with our company plan. Is that cool, Ken? Yep. Okay. I was only there for a portion of the meeting, so I don't know if I got a full plan. I heard some interesting things. I heard that some towns put solar in their residential because they want to save their commercial. I heard that other towns put solar in their commercial because they don't want it in their residential, which is, has been the approach of our town. I also heard discussion of an overlay district of using solar um, and it, so that there's a clear view of where the town wants solar to go. There was also discussion of that our comprehensive plan is lacking a clear view of solar development, which was a fair comment, I think, because we, we talk about renewable energy, but we don't talk about a really specific plan of what we're trying to do. Or locations. Or locations. <clears throat> and um, so, Rob, you were there for longer than when I was. So was there anything that, that you would like to just bring up I think they handled it very well, but I don't know if I'd be playing the devil's advocate. They're almost as new into this as we are in our It's to equate it to a small toddler. When you learn to walk, you walk. You get up and you learn not to do that again. That's pretty much where we've been. Where have we come from? Where are we going? Let's go here. This may not work. This may work. You know, it's, it's a learning curve that we're all on. They address it, they brought it forth, like you said, different townships and municipalities have done different things. And it's, it was all valuable information. I, I enjoyed the, the meeting with everyone. So I guess I would like to think that after we get their final recommendations, because this was just an information session, that we revisit the comprehensive plan, Jim, and decide how we want to proceed and what additions that we should make to have it go before the town so that we have some clear guidance of what we are doing 
regarding um, solar. Did, did this meeting help with the revision of our solar ordinance? Oh, we are spot on, actually. I think part of a lot of our, our revisions were, oh, you know, what was, we were good. I mean, we... And where does that stand as of right now? I don't... It's up for a plenty, but it's up for town council on the... The 15th. October, October 15th. 15th. Public hearing on the... Uh, for, for the solar ordinance revision. That was decided last night, yeah, to schedule it for October. But this that you're talking about could go in a concurrent path along with it? Well, it would go into our comprehensive plan. plan. And so they, they hit that our comprehensive plan is a crucial linchpin into how the town is doing their development. Not, not just the revised solar ordinance. Not just the revised solar ordinance. Yeah. So I guess I would just, just wanted to just we were there, could, have a discussion. Could someone say, after the revision of the ordinance, could someone say that's in contradiction to our no. comprehensive plan? I was thinking that there would be amendments that we propose really rise to that level. Okay, so. more detail or yeah. and, and you know, I'll just echo what Ron said. You know, we've been, we've been doing this for a long time, and ordinances are very much like this. Craft something. Uh, because most of the time you have to right. you throw it out there, and you don't really know if it works until applicants start using it. Cluster comment tonight. You know, we worked long and hard on a cluster ordinance, and then somebody comes in and just twists it in a way that you, you just don't expect it. This is going to happen again, with, even with our amendments, because it, it, it's, a, it's brand new. I would and, say it's going to happen more than again. It may happen. Several times. Okay. As long as we're ready yeah. for it. Right. And right. ready to make continued amendments to it. I, I'm okay. Nobody's an expert at this point, at least not that I've seen. So. But I guess just in terms of thinking about, because we often talk about balancing you know, the environmental concerns and all of that, and where do we want to keep these green swaths as much as we can. And I, I don't know. I think once they, once they final it, I'd like to consider what we're going to do with our comprehensive plan. Just as looking at what we have and making sure that we're all, the council and we're all on the same page with where we're going with solar. My take on the whole thing, from what was put out at that meeting and the proposals that we all came up with to amend the comprehensive plan, Hockington is in the lead going forward with what seems to be the way to go. Like, like we've discussed, you know, it, it may be good, it may need to be fine-tuned a little bit more. But my opinion is how could then, with the amendments that we proposed, is there any along those lines? Was there any discussion of why Hockington's been Oh, it's all over now. I think well, that was the discussion I had, yeah. and it's all over. I knew the, I knew yeah. the, the central areas were, but... Um, there was a nice comment. You put your finger on that at some point. You know, people come down here, they just cut everything down because it's cheaper than building on a landfill, which is preferable, but it takes money, the power's not. There was some interesting discussion of using carports and putting them on top of carports. So that, I thought that was pretty good. You know, using existing, already asphalted spaces and doing stuff. So. The question is, how many carports do we need in that one? <laughs> I would settle for a non-blinking light, Ron. That is actually a stop light and not a blinking let's, light. Let's see what the car foot developers are. All right. So, and I, There's a line outside that went to get in. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, members, would you like to speak? Yes. Uh, I was also at that state meeting. Yeah. And I was really impressed with the town of Hopkinton, how much more superior we were for the information that Barbara was there also, the information the state was giving us, we've been there, done that. So we were so far ahead of the curve, I think, as far as the state was concerned. The, there were two negative things I took out of that. I, I may be wrong on this. It appeared to me that the state was really pushing to use, and again, they said the town certainly has the authority to do what they want, but they were really pushing to use residential property for solar. The other thing that was interesting, as we all know, Exeter, Coventry, Hopkinton, there wasn't any provision with the state for protection concerning wellhead 
and so I prefer. There was no discussion from the state. I don't recall any at all because I raised that question to the state and they, they said that they really hadn't thought about the state, I mean uh, the, the aquifer. And my point was, when, as you know, when you look at our area in the southern part of the state, it's all mostly well water. And the state never really considered that. And they, they certainly were accommodating to the suggestions that we had. About it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Barbara and Harvey. Okay, feel free. Oh, no, I, oh, Barbara, that was said in the most generous way. So. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that um, they did say that I thought was really interesting that I would like to add to our ordinance when it's brought up in October 15 is they had a very interesting historic perspective. They had a historic component to the solar ordinance as introduced at the state solar meeting. Um, they added how um, solar cannot be on historic properties, but they also mentioned the historic views. So a property has a view of a space, and the viewpoints should be addressed as well, um, that the solar shouldn't be on those on historic. So I would very much like, they had some suggestions on what you put into the ordinance, um, specifically on historic, historic buildings and historic views. And I would very much like to see that put into the ordinance that we um, take a look at at the hearing. Okay. Uh, whether we do it, you know, we do it now or we do it after the hearing. But I thought that was actually a really good perspective. I never thought of it. And it was good that they had. So at least they realized the value of historic views like hay fields right. or, um, you know, the way you look at a, at a river and you don't want anything in the way. Right. Anyway, that's, that's all. Thank you, Carmen. Harvey. Yes. You didn't get an old Harvey though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things I'm pondering because the Conservation Commission has been trying to be supportive of uh, multiple things at one time with solar and wind, uh, ways to use that to support farms would be one thing. Uh, because it does bring income and they don't have to put time and energy into, into it, so it's, uh, it's a cash crop. Uh, and another thing, I remember uh, Sharon Davis stood up, and I don't know if her numbers were right, but it was nice to see oh. somebody throw some out. She said something like, we're already with approved projects, or something like that, 51% of the energy requirement for our town. I think that Average energy requirement in a, in a home in this summer, I think now it's 800, 1100 uh, kilowatt hours a month. So she probably just was able to do some math times uh, households and come up with that. And when, I don't know where this would fit, whether it be at the comprehensive plan level or the uh, mm, ordinance or something. So. But I think at the comprehensive plan level. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, to at least that would be targets anyway. Yep. What, what, what should be, how much should we have uh, in forms of alternative energy? And, and do we do it just because we're going to take care of Hopkinton, you know, our 100% and that's it? Or we look at, you know, I mean, there's, you know, that's thing I'll stop the uh, uh, Antarctic from melting. Uh, and so, you know, when is enough enough, but I just wanted to see that discussion and some guidance from that because right now, as you all know, it's just kind of flying in here and, and we don't know when the applicants are going to stop knocking at your door and uh, what's going to be left to the town. So it's a hard, you know, I would, I would love to see some thought and discussion on that uh, for that purpose to try to have some guidance of where it's acceptable to go. I agree with you. I think the target should be and that's where I've been seeking help guide us. What do we comments we want to do? Yeah, but wait a minute. This isn't being driven by our percentage of electricity. This isn't being driven by applicants walking in the door. I, I'm if, there, if we've approved 15 projects, it's my opinion we're 14 too far over the line. <laughs> but what do you do? Tell an applicant, no, you're done? You can't come in here simply because we have 51% of our power? I, I don't think it works that way. I don't know the legality of it. It may be possible to say once we have 
100 megawatts or something. Yeah, like uh, the 10% that, affordable. That, uh, I did. That, that we do close the door. I have no, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm looking back at the cabinet. The well, discuss, discussion is in order. It's a good. It's a good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be over when it's not profitable to the developers. Yes. No, well, that's for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good thought. Thank you, Harvey. Yes, Barbara. Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, that's that's that email is still coming. Oh. Okay. These are good people, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Hi. I'm Hi. Alexander Poulos of the Woody Hill Road. And for me to come out here, and this has to be real important to me. Um, so one of the things I want to just mention is that I spoke with a neighbor. Uh, he actually, he called me, and it was about the Brushy Brush Brook project. And he said that out of fear, he and his neighbors would sign a petition to allow solar in Brushy Brook because they fear some other de development would be. I have to be a little bit careful, sir. I believe in mentioning specific applicants as a board. Well, the public can do that. It's just a okay. bit tricky. Yeah, it's it's tricky. Just, it's just tricky. Yeah, 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 I, I get tricky. it. I, I just wanted to remind our, our, yeah. our But that's fine. Point. But, okay, go ahead. So I'm just kind of wanting to just throw this out here. He said that uh, they would sign a petition to allow it because of uh, out of fear. They would they fear that some other development would be imposed on them. They feel that they have been forced to choose between two evils, and and that was out of fear. Uh, They've been beaten in, uh, in past fight, or uh, they feel um, beaten from past fights, uh, low-income housing. They had suggested at one time a federal prison, um, and they said they were tired of the battles waged upon them. They believe this property was best used for open space because, I think you had mentioned about the huge rocks and boulders there, and the glacier there, and it just and isn't feasible to build on it, plus all the water that goes through there. Yeah, but a tremendous amount of state land already, but the state's already refused to buy it. Right, right. So, um, you know, uh, but they did agree with me because I had mentioned before at the meeting that, and this is what I don't understand that, the state owns two fields that adjoins that property. They're already cut down, they're already fields. If solar has to go in there, why can't we use those fields and the state can use this land as land for their park system? If the state doesn't want to invest in solar, why are they jamming solar down our throats? And that's what I don't understand. The second thing I want to say is that solar energy coming in here and spot zoning are two separate issues. Spot zoning is illegal, it's immoral, and it invades the neighborhoods, uh, the harmony of a neighborhood. And the people have a right to, you know, decide what's going to go. If industry is coming into their neighborhood, that's their choice, not, it, it shouldn't be up. I mean, you have a right to protect the people in their homes, and that's the most important thing. And the last thing I want to say, I'm a tree hunter. Trees give us food, shelter, uh, they hold the soil together, they give us food, and anything that gives us so much life, I have nothing but gratitude for it. Thank you. You're welcome any time to come to our meeting, so thank you very much. I, I will just chime in on the, uh, the, the fields that you mentioned. Are those part of the Arcadia management area? Yes, they are. So I was present for a portion of this. Did you go to this state Sorry. presentation? Yeah, yes. yes. So did you hear the part about uh, some of the state property was acquired by or with federal funding, and yes. some of that funding might not allow this kind of development on it? I think it's a great idea. I don't think the state has stepped up. Right. The way they and the federal government and there's all the bond land there. But that could be the reason why the state is stumbling. And, and I understand that. And here's the problem I'm having. They're dictating the law for the state. But the law says that commercial or uh, commercial zoning is allowed in residential, and they're forcing the town to change this zoning. So it's okay on one half to to sit there and follow the law on their part, just like this gentleman said, the law is the law. Yeah, well, if we just followed the law, we wouldn't have this solar problem because they wouldn't be allowed in residential areas, and that's how the law is. But they're changing the law for big business, but they're not holding the law for the average person. So that's where I got an issue here on, that, on the law. Yep. Absolutely. But actually, some of this is more directed at our council. No, I know I understand. I'm just okay. putting it out here. I, I hear you, and, and it's, you're always welcome to make yeah. two of your meetings and chair. And plus, this is baby step. I feel it's so much easier to talk to you guys. 
than it is to go in front of. So I have to learn. This is a learning curve yeah. for me. So yeah. thank you for being patient with me and helping me to you are welcome make to the next big Actually, step. I, I believe in civic engagement. And I do too. Even if it's clunky, it's okay. It so, is okay. okay. Thank you. Yes, Ron. Uh, along with what Ella was saying about, and this gentleman was saying about the land being purchased with federal funds. Now, they were 95 through. No. I was driving at that time, 1969. <laughs> they took land both sides all the way up. Uh, Big Bend Reservoir was brought up at that time. It was put aside and was paid for by Big River. Big River. Yeah, the one up there yeah, yeah, yeah. just before Exit 6. Yeah. That was in 1969. I asked, is there a statute of limitations on these bonds? And everybody was, uh, uh, how long does it last where it's no longer valid? Okay, they came up with the money in 1969. It's a while ago. Is it still valid? You know, and nobody seems to, you know, the, the, the general from this, I mean, he was very polite. He, Right in front of me, says, I don't know that would have to be addressed at the state level. Someone would have to contact them. And I would have to say that I'm remiss in that. I've been doing other things, and I haven't contacted the state to see if it's still a valid issue. Yeah. Good point. Yes, Barbara. One of the comprehensive plan is concerned, um, because I was thinking about it when I was listening to them too, and a lot of this, where they want us to put uh, renewable energy into our comp plan, I thought immediately of our 10% low income housing. Mm -hmm. And we could address it similarly, by what percentage of our land do we want to use for renewable energy? Anything, gas, oil, electric, uh, solar, wind. Um, because at the moment, we have about 600 acres. Now, out of 36,000 acres, which is pretty much what we have in Hopkinton. Yeah. What's it? 38? Oh, it was 28,000. 28,000 acres. We now have approximately, because you have to add the farms in too, you have about 600 acres. So. At some point, do we want to use 1% of our land, 2% of our land? That is the maximum we will do for our town for whatever renewable energy we end up having. Might give us an end point, a stop point, to say we have done this, it's in our comp plan, you've agreed to it, the state has, because they want us to address it. Right. And maybe there's a way for us to address it in a percentage, because a wind takes X percentage, solar another percentage, gas, oil another percentage, but do it by percentage to say we won't, we won't give you anyone this amount of our land. We need it for homes, families, commercial manufacturing, open space, uh, farm housing, tourism, by the way, it's a large part of our state, it's like our tourism. You know, so we could think of it that way on the comp plan. Yes. On a comp plan way. Okay, good. I like that. Thank you. Mentioned that as you folks are well aware, uh, we have a comprehensive plan that was just approved by the state. Okay, it's good for 10 years. Yep. It meets the new requirements that were put in place for comprehensive plans that required us to address in the plan energy production and consumption. So Did we, we, do we have percentage a, we have an approved plan that addresses energy production and consumption. Okay. okay? Now, we can certainly amend the plan as many times as we want, but we have an approved plan that meets the new requirements. Now, as was mentioned, why are we getting hammered? Somebody mentioned the question, why are we getting hammered down here with things? We're getting hammered with solar applications. That's what we're getting hammered with. But to be, but we're not getting, if, if there's any hammering going on around, the town itself is wielding the tool on itself, okay? The town council has already said that solar projects can go by right in manufacturing zones, commercial zones, and on farms, small ones on farms, okay? The applications that we've seen come in here are applying to change our comp plan and zoning from residential to commercial or manufacturing for solar projects. 
none of those projects need be approved by the town council. They are approving them. If there's an emergency situation or a disaster situation, it's being created by the town council and approving these things. If you feel as though you have enough solar projects, just say no to the ones that are, that are walking in the door, and, and the planning board won't be seeing these things anymore. But today, the council keeps approving them, approving them. They've approved two large ones, so Alton Bradford Road, Main Street, which you saw so tonight. So how can you say that, oh, we're getting hammered by the... We're allowing developers to hammer us. We're opening the door for them and paving the, paving the way. If you don't want these, this is what the town had. Before we think about amending our comprehensive plan again, okay, we might learn something as to as to where the town council stands on this issue when we when we uh, undertake our zoning, um, our solar ordinance amendments on the fifteenth of October. Okay. We might learn then what okay. what the town wants. When once we learn what the town wants, yes. We can go ahead and go forth and amend our comprehensive plan. I'm not saying we should go and, and do that exactly today. <laughs> I'm just opening the conversation. I hear you. And I hear your frustration. I get it. I, I think we all share that. No, I'm not frustrated. Yeah. I'm just telling it like it is. Well, yeah, I, just, yeah. I, I just tell it like it is. <laughs> right. If you don't want solar projects, right. all you have to do is say no, 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 no. Right. And problem solved. Right. But we keep saying yes, 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 yes. Well, no, three people keep saying yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but I guess part okay. of it, you're right, but I, 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 I think, I, I agree with you, Jim, I think we go, we see how the ordinances do, maybe we wait another month, maybe things have changed, and I think then we look at, um, we go back and think about the comments. You took the words right out of my mouth, I wish I'd said it, and you didn't have to say it. So, okay. Amy, Amy, I agree. Can I say, real quick, I know it's late. Real quick, sir. Real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you talked about the residents. Um, we had overflowed the town at the first meeting for Old Depot Road. We had 85 residents show up at the middle school. The last uh, the meeting after that, we had 190 residents show up uh, at the meeting. Meaning we had Monday night, we had 65 residents there. The number of emails, all the correspondence that's gone to the town council, some of the town council members. Um, a petition was signed by 288 residents of our town, and they said, Tom Buck said it perfectly, people move to this town for its rural character. And not you folks, because I agree with everything that you guys have said. Um, some people are losing sight of the fact that that's why we moved here. Jim had mentioned it. I, I see Jim twice a week. I'm on the payroll now. I get checked every week. Um, but we really need to look to protect what we're about. We moved here for a particular reason. And it's to protect the residential uh, property that we own. Elections are in November. Right. Well, we've already, uh, we're working on that. Mr. Uh, Peter, and I, I've said a lot of this before, and I realize that this is going to involve zoning, but I, maybe this is all about names. The state talks about names. I didn't go into the presentation. I've seen this slide yet. Should we set up a different zone? Should, should the town have... That was this overlay zone. They were talking about Or an overlay zone. Or zone. limit to manufacturing yeah. because this is not... It's a, it's a manufacturing operation. Manufacturing is greater setbacks. Developers want to right. I mean, that's something that probably is going on. Um, how do we encourage solar panels not ground enough? I would... If we needed the energy, and someone said, no, i got to cut down some trees. If they told me, we've already put solar on the roofs of the schools. We've already covered the parking lots with the solar canopy. We've already got residential solar to a, a certain percentage. I might be more willing to accept the fact that, well, if we need power, it's what we got to do. But we haven't even scratched the surface on a canopy over Charlotte Middle School, where we were, where, 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 where many of us were last night. You could cover that entire parking lot with solar energy. We don't have any means to encourage that. Um, and I recognize that's in Richmond, but we have large parking lots here that we can cover as well. Um, also, just an observation, you'd think in a rural community, if you did a real estate search for properties for sale only 20 acres, you'd find one. You don't. So they're all nominal for a reason. And the last point I want to bring up 
is, and I recognize that this is this is more of a town council conversation, a planning board conversation. I have yet to see a single applicant come in and say the reason why my plan belongs in Hopkinton is because it supports the comprehensive plan point by point. Not a single applicant talks about that. It's left for us to infer how this project may be compatible with the comp plan. And I think the onus falls to the applicant for them to convince us. If, if you want the planning board to recommend that we change the comp plan, then tell us where in the comp plan that your project is compatible. Don't make me guess. Because I've, I've read it more times than I care to admit. And I, I don't see it. Okay, I think I'd like to move on. Um, solicitor's report? None. Planner's report? Correspondence and updates? None. Public comment? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak that's not Barbara Capella? <laughs> <laughs> or average Joe. <laughs> or average Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That. I really do. Um, dating our next regular meeting is October 3rd, 2018. So you are welcome, average Joe. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye.